We created this video to help guide you along some of the unknowns that might come up. Uh, this should be actually there right alongside of you to refer to anytime you come across something that you don't know what to do. On top of this, uh, hopefully along this process, you're going to learn from us and some of the things that we've seen. This can take you to so many different places, not just within our company, but possibly in any kind of future educational role. Hi, I'm Trina and I'm a marketing rep for EnviroBond at the Home Depot. This video is for the marketing reps who are going into the Home Depot for the first time representing EnviroBond. So your outfit is going to be a tuxedo t-shirt like the one I'm wearing right now and you're going to be wearing some steel-toed shoes. Uh, steel-toed shoes are required by the Home Depot. You're always going to want to have on you a couple sample pucks to use for demonstration. Um, this shows the product so that the employees have a better idea as to what exactly it's all about. And you're also going to want to carry some water. The water is used for the samples that you're going to be demonstrating. Uh, you'll also want to be carrying some brochures to hand out to the employees. And you'll want to have a recording device, so either your phone or to take pictures and to also do some voice memos. So the main goal for your first visit is to make sure the product is in the best location possible. Ideally, you'll want to be on an end cap uh, near the paving stones so that you're near the product that it goes with as well as around all the competition. If you can't get an end cap, the next best bet um, is to be in what they call a bay. So the bay location is in the middle of an aisle but also in the stone area. If you could be next to the competition, Perfect. Uh, we want to be next to them to, to show our strength. If you can't find the product, if it's, if it's not already out, you'll have to search for it. Um, it may be in building materials, it may be wrapped up high somewhere, in building materials especially, or it could be out in a lot, in a storage lot. Um, so locating it and then Along the way, also locating um, somebody who can drive the forklift as well as a flagger because it requires two people to move the product. Those are things you'll want to be searching for along the way. The Home Depot staff are very helpful and they're always excited to see that there's an actual rep there for a product. So negotiating getting an end cap. Um, sometimes they'll be more than willing to give it to you because you can just show your wonderful huge signs that you have. Um, the product looks great, you can show them a picture of, of what it looked like in another store um, and they want that, they want their seasonal department to look spiffy. So, um, Or you can also uh, let them know that the product even on the planogram, on the original planogram, which is basically the map that every store gets as to where pro every product is on the original planogram that it does show that our product um, is on an end cap when possible. So what that means is every seasonal department's a little different. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So when possible, we are to be on an end cap. So once you have the go ahead on getting the product on an end cap, uh, you'll get the, the drivers to, to drop it off there. You're going to want to put the signs up immediately. Um, the signs will be attached to lattice. You're going to have to buy the lattice at the store, which you'll be reimbursed for. So you want to secure the sign uh, to the frame and you'll be using zip ties for that. And you want to make sure that the sign is about a foot above the top bag on the pallet. After you've put up the signs, then you'll want to put the pricing sticker on them. So if you're using the large signs, you'll be using the pallet size stickers. If you're using the smaller signs, you'll be using the business card size stickers. And you can ask an employee to help you print those off.
Once you have the sticker on there, then you're pretty much done. So you have your palettes there, they look great. You have your signs up, the stickers are on, so you can take a picture because it looks fantastic. When we're talking about the first visit, I like to educate the employees along the way. So anyone who I meet, who I run into, who I'm asking help from, anything like that. Because I find that if you explain the product to them, then they're more excited and willing to help you. And yeah, and then if you, after you have the product up, then education is always huge. So they call it product knowledge in the Home Depot. So PK for short. So you can just go up to somebody and just say, do you have time for a quick PK? And they'll almost always say yes. And they're very willing to learn. The Home Depot staff, they well, first of all, when they see you, they're gonna light up because they love the shirts. They love just the look of you at the beginning. And then once they hear about the product, they're always so impressed and so interested because it's completely different than any of the other products that are out there. And they're also not used to being shown it, like actually physically shown the product. And they really enjoy that because then it feels like they've used it, that they can, you know, that they trust it. And they, it's not just words you're saying, it's something that they can feel and actually tell a customer, like I, I believe I saw this, this is how it works. Well, it's a great feeling when you get to leave um, and the display just looks amazing because that's, that's what's gonna help sell the product as well. And it's there for, like for the customers, but also for the employees. You know, the, the signs show all the main points that you've talked to them about so they can always refer to it. And, and they just know that overall that, you know, that they've, they've met you and they, they know that it has like a, a, a connection for them. It's great if you can leave the store knowing that those employees are gonna look after the product when you're gone. And it's gonna make your job a lot easier too. If they're looking after it, making sure that it's well stocked, making sure that it looks nice, keeping it clean, that's a great day. So when I meet an employee for the first time, I'm basically, I'm gonna describe the product first. So I'm gonna say that it's the sand mixed with a plant glue and it's designed to go in between your paving stones to help keep it from washing away and to keep the weeds out really well. Um, and then I would go into more detail depending on how they light up, if they kind of were more environmentally or on that side, or if I thought maybe that they were more interested in the science behind it. You know, you definitely wanna read your audience and what they're giving you. And if they look like they're rushed, the last thing you wanna do is um, bother somebody who's in a hurry, right? So sometimes you might make the call, like I'm just gonna give them like a quick little little tidbit about it and then you know let them go on their way and I'm not gonna bother with a sample. But if they're just looking like they want more, then you're always gonna go into a demo and show them, show them the sample. So um, this is a sample. So what you do is you're gonna break it up into pieces and you wanna break it up into small pieces and then you wanna stack them like you're making a little sand castle. And the reason for this is just because the water will absorb quicker. So while I'm breaking it, then I'm gonna, I will tell them that this, the biggest difference between this product and a lot of the other sands out there, like a polymeric sand, is that this product has a glue that's reactivated every time it gets wet. So most products, they do get hard, but if you ever had any cracks or ground movement, then that's how you get weeds in those cracks or it'll just chip and, and wash away. So with this product, the glue is reactivated by water. So if you had any cracks or ground movement, next time it rains, it'll re-adhere to its surroundings. So I'm just gonna, and then you're gonna take your water bottle and you can pour water. It doesn't matter if you pour too much. Um, usually you're in seasonal, so it's okay if you make a mess. Um, if you're inside, you just you know find a little corner to make your little puddle in. Um, and then I usually will let it sit for um, 
a couple minutes while I tell them about um, some more of the science behind it. The other really interesting thing about this product is that it has a pH level of 11. So it just makes it very unfavorable for any seeds to germinate, which is another really neat environmentally friendly weed deterrent that it has. Um, of course, the main weed deterrent is just that it stays in place so well. And if you have a product that stays where it should, there's nowhere for the, um, the weed seeds to get in. And then you're going to just form it. So mash it with your thumbs. Um, you'll be able to feel that there'll be some like little harder bits in there and then you'll, you'll wanna just drain some of the excess water by holding it there. And then once you have it mashed in really good, then um, you can explain to them that even though, it, well, especially while, it's, while it looks soft, is when the glue is activated the most to be adhering to its surroundings because it's activated by water. So even though it's soft, it doesn't wash away. So if I pour more water over top, just to show how the water will sheet over top and not take the sand with it, that's a really um, exciting thing for the, for the um, employees to be able to see and to be able to feel, because then you can say, see how you feel the, the spongy, the spongy feeling that it has is what allows it to adhere really strong without washing away every time it gets wet. And then it'll you know, dry again, like you saw in the beginning. Um, we reuse these sample pucks, so yeah. That's, and they like to hear that too, just so that they know that this is, isn't just a, a one-time thing, this happens over and over. For follow-up visits, you're going to want to just go straight to the product. So go to the seasonal department and then you're going to want to assess the situation to see where everything's at. And once you're there, take a picture. We call this the before picture. Uh, and then at the end, once you got everything perfect, then you'll take the after picture. First of all, you want to make sure that the product is in the proper place that you'd left it in, that it hasn't been moved. Um, and then you'll also want to make sure that there is enough um, product on the palette. We say if there's less than two layers of the bags, then you'll want to get a new palette dropped. And once you get that new palette in there, then you're going to take the, those two layers and you're going to put them on top of the new palette. And they call that hand bombing when you put the old bags on top of the new palette. If there are any uh, torn or ripped bags or any damaged product, uh, just neatly place it beside the palette. If there are brochure holders on the signs, then you'll always want to fill those when you go in as well. And then once you have everything nice and tidy, then you'll take your after picture, showing that everything is uh, perfectly stacked. Another thing you're going to want to make sure you do is, is have the palette neatly stacked. So people will put bags back in this and that way. So you wanna make sure that it's following a certain pattern. So if you ever don't know the pattern of the way the bags are supposed to go, you just look two layers down and then you can see that bag goes that way. So this bag goes the same way. It's always every second layer. So a huge part of follow-up visits is doing uh, PKs or product knowledge with the employees. Um, we usually say try to talk to at least five people every visit. Um, you can talk to them on your way in, on your way to do whatever you're doing. It's, it's a great way to introduce yourself. So once you do the PK, then you're gonna wanna record it. So you could either write it down or most phones have a voice memo or recorder. That's what I like to use, it's easiest. Um, just so that you remember who they are the next time you go back. Just a note on, on stocking up, if you go to uh, replenish a pallet and it's either the last one or they don't have any, just to make a note of that and to let us know. Okay, so here's a checklist of PK things to remember. So when you first um, meet somebody, make sure you introduce yourself and you're gonna to wanna to remember their name because you're gonna be making a note afterwards of who you talked to. Uh, and then show them a demo if you have time, definitely talk about the product. Um, give them a brochure and let them know that if you have any questions or they have any other questions or customers do to refer to our website, it's awesome. There's installation videos, all sorts of more information there as well. And there's one thing to watch for, make sure they're not with a customer. You don't want to be bothering them when they're busy. So
So you want to make the best impact with the best people that you can. Um, start with seasonal staff. Everyone in seasonal should know about the product um, and is more interested because they deal with it and they get a lot of questions there. Um, the second best place to go would be building materials. Building materials is where a lot of the other jointing sands are kept. Uh, so the employees there know a lot about jointing sands and will be very interested to know that there is a new one which is also considered part of their department that's kept out in seasonal. Um, it's nice for them to know that they'll also be getting the credit if any of those bags are sold, that it goes from their sales or on their sales record. Um, and then after that, I would probably say greeters and customer service are the next uh, people who you'd want to talk to. Greeters are giving people directions and answering questions all the time. So anybody who's looking for a new product, the greeters are going to want to know for sure about a new product. So you can start off by telling them this is new, it's out in seasonal, let me tell you a little bit about it so that you, you know, so you know if anybody asks. And then with customer service, you know, they deal more with, um, with people who have problems with products. So it's great to be able to educate them so that if, if a customer comes in not knowing, you know, properly how to install it or they had some kind of an issue that they're well versed on on either handling that or they've at least heard of it and they can forward them to the, the appropriate person. But all in all, anybody's good to talk to. So just managers, obviously, um, supervisors are amazing because they've most likely heard about the product but may not know exactly how it works and they're, you know, they're talking to tons of people and training staff all the time, so they're wonderful to talk to too. Everybody. And don't forget it's green. It's the only product on the market of its kind. It's got a plant glue in it. It's environmentally friendly. We dress in green, we're representing. So be proud and be excited about it because people are excited about a green product. You're going to get some stuff. You're going to get some sample pucks to use for your demonstrations. You're going to receive some zip ties and those are used to attach the signs to the lattice. You're going to get some large signs and you're going to get some smaller signs depending on if the product is on an end cap or if it's in a bay location. So you're also going to get a t-shirt and brochures. So you'll have everything you need to go out there and get them. <laughs>